I'll just keep him held uh, close to the camera. Hey, we're just going to do it this way through the phone because uh, I think what it is is the computer's uh, considering my microphone as one device and it won't share it with um, the Skype and the uh, Google application. But this way, uh, at least we'll hear you too. I've got you held close enough to the camera. The microphone should pick it up. So, And uh, Mike should be able to hear you at least halfway decent. All right. Uh, can you hear me? Not just barely. He can hear you. You said barely. I can hear you. So we'll just deal with it as best as we can. But anyway, what we're going to be right. doing here. Give me a second. I've got to run. I don't know what the damn dog is. Okay. You decided to go into a plunge. <laughs> I can hear him. Okay, well, first part of the conversation, anyway, I wanted to talk about and uh, just give out a big thank you to everybody that has participated in the Polar Bear Challenge. And uh, one person, one unsung hero we have that's been working on the background and hasn't really gotten many shout-outs, and uh, we really owe him a debt of gratitude. That's Everyday Riding Chris. He's been working in the background doing the statistics. He made an awesome spreadsheet for us. In fact, there's multiple sp spreadsheets interlinked, which... Uh, was really uh, a lot of a lot of work that he put in there, and uh, he just did it all behind the scenes. He wasn't really out on the camera so much. He was just working hard, and I wanted to make sure and uh, have his name mentioned there, and giving him a lot of thanks. Yes, definitely, he's awesome. Yeah, but uh, and he, he did a lot of appreciation on that because I don't think he would have been near as good without his support. Yeah, yeah, and ma as a matter of fact, he asked me twice to take over. I was originally going to be the statistics guy, which it would have turned out pretty bad if it would have been up to me to do it. It would have been a real simplistic kind of thing. I mean, I would have barely just done the bare minimum of statistics. And he asked twice, basically. He could kind of see that I was not really skilled in that area, so he asked me a second time, and he said, Chuck, really, I, I wouldn't mind taking it over. Let me handle it, and uh, I'm glad that he did talk me into it. Yeah, really. But the other person we wanted to mention, too, was somebody that came on board and helped us out. That uh, He did it, He took it on his own to do it, and he wasn't even asked. That's uh, Todd Kapuz and the uh, added thing about the teams. Uh, can, you, can you even believe it, too, that this year the biggest team, if you want to count it as an unofficial team together, were the Harley guys? I would have never believed that. I thought we were going to end up being something like a KLR or a dual sports site mostly, and the cruisers would just be uh, bringing up the rear, but uh, we had... Classic Harley bikers all over the place. Woohoo! Yeah. yeah that, was, that was fantastic. I know. Absolutely. And the Bergman, yeah, we had uh, we had cruisers yeah. and we had Bergman people uh, all together on the Polar Bear Challenge. So it was not th this thing just yeah. basically just turned into something totally different and totally fun this year. Oh, yeah, that was amazing. And. Uh, Especially with a challenge this year, too, because as most people know that are up north like I am, too, this was like one of the warmest, balmiest winters we've ever had. It was it was more like Atlanta, Georgia, I felt like, than Chicago up here. Yeah, really, it's been very warm. Yeah. But uh, one thing I wanted to bring... Go ahead, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, the guys in the Netherlands, yeah, they had a warm winter like we did, so they barely were able to get their polar bear rides in and stuff. Yeah, we got very lucky uh, down here in the south. I mean, lucky, actually, let me rephrase that. We got lucky because of the warm weather, so I didn't suffer, but it was unlucky because I only had like three or four days worth of riding. Yeah. I was, I was stretched to get in my five rides up here, even being in Chicago. Now, if I would have rode at night like Big Bill did and a few others did. If I'd have rode more at night, I could have gotten plenty in, but I just couldn't take the chance living on a dead-end street where there was ice patches all the time. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. But anyway, one person we wanted to uh, uh, give a special award to, we've uh, come up with an award this year, and all three of us unanimously agreed to it, the Spirit of the Polar Bear Award. Uh, this year is going to go to Todd Kapuz. And uh, just an announcement, you two guys are not aware of this, but I talked to him. And he volunteered next year to give uh, EDR, Chris, a break and take over and be our statistics guys because I know how hard that is. And giving somebody a break so they don't have to do it year after year sure keeps it a lot more enjoyable. I know the fact if I ended up having to be the judge for the Polar Bear Challenge after the first year and do it the second year and the third year, it just burns you out. So another big thank you to, to Todd. It, it, his first name is really Bill. But a big thank you to Bill for volunteering to be the statistics guy next year. Yes, here, here. Yeah. I'll, I'll be there for him every time. 
every time. If they, if they start getting behind, whoever wants to volunteer, what you're going to do is uh, let me know, and I'll be right there with you because I'll be at next year, too. Yeah, because remember, it's uh, good to give everybody a break and let people rotate and give a different person a chance. It, it uh, not only gives the other person a rest, but I think it brings a new kind of way of looking at the Polar Bear Challenge year by year. Loud Pipes, he contributed a lot of great ideas to the Polar Bear Challenge. Navy Thomas did a lot of new, new, t new ways of doing things. And uh, I'd like to see some other new faces volunteer for next year's uh, being a judge, too. If necessary, since I've gotten a break for a few years, I won't mind stepping in, but... Uh, for myself, if I never end up being judged because we have enough volunteers that I never have to do it again, I'll be just as happy as can be, too. Um, this is what we make of it, and the effort we put into it makes it what it is. So I just wanted to say that. I totally agree. I love the fact that everybody participates every year in a new way. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, if we don't, if nobody wants to participate and nobody wants to make it happen, we may have a year where we don't have one. I don't foresee that happening because it seems the interest is growing. But remember, it's, you know, it is what we put into it and what we uh, put the effort to make it to be. Hopefully this coming winter, uh, you know, 2012 and 13, I'm hoping that I'll be able to participate more now. Yeah. Yeah, especially now that your leg's healing up and stuff like that, and you'll be able to actually spend more time on the bike. Yes, definitely. But Tom and I also, the reason why I wanted to get all three of us in here is Tom and I had a little surprise to spring on you, too. Um, I don't know if you know, but Tom and I kind of have this habit of uh, when we get together with groups of people, Tom, probably even more than I do, uh, we have this habit of giving people certain nicknames that tend to stick with them, especially on YouTube. So, uh, Tom, <laughs> you want you want to tell uh, Mike his new nickname that he's been officially given? Papa Bear Mike, your name officially now, and you can use it on your YouTube channel. We hereby grant you official permission as uh, Grand Poobah right. in our own mind. So uh, from now on, any polar bear should refer to you properly as Papa Bear Mike. And if you're not a polar bear, when you say the name, you should genuflect. No, we're just, we're just, we're, we're just kidding about that part. But yeah, he will be officially referred to anything to do with the Polar Bear Challenge. His official title now is Papa Bear Mike. I love it. Thank you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Girl, <what> for <laughs> You're right up there with the Rose Bowl, Granddaddy. Yeah, he's right up there with the Rose Bowl, he said. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Papa yeah. Bear Mike. You know, I, I do have enough dogs here to be considered a somewhat of a Papa Bear. Yeah, yeah, that's true with his little clan. You know, he's got eight of them running around there now, Tom. He's got eight little puppies. I saw the video yesterday, and all I can say is, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think with two do yeah, with two dogs and four cats, I'm crowded enough. I don't think I'm going to add any animals anymore. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, let me uh, go ahead and say goodbye to the people that are watching on the video, and I'm going to turn my cameras off before the battery dies. So, uh, you guys on YouTube, take care. I hope next year that anybody that was looking in on us at the Polar Bear Challenge decides to maybe take up the challenge to join. Uh, do as little as you feel comfortable doing. Do as much as you feel comfortable doing. No pressure on anybody.